welcome to the news on NTA International. My name is Frama Panyi. Hannah Olayenka is the sign language interpreter. Let's see the headlines. Conservative Party 14 year hold on to power in the United Kingdom came to an end, seeing Rishi resign. Labour Party's Keir Starmer assuming as PM, as Iranian also vote for a president in a runoff. Mauritania's Constitutional Council has confirmed the re election of President Mohamed Ul Sheikh El Ghazouini in last weekend's election. And Nigeria's Civil Aviation Authority suspends the operation of 10 private jet operators in the country for non certification. Labour Party wins the UK general elections in a landslide victory, paving the way for Keir Starmer to come as the new Prime Minister. His centre-left opposition Labour Party coasted to victory, ending 14 years of right-wing conservative rule. At a triumphant party rally in central London, Starmer told chairing activists that change begins now, promising to inject a decade of national renewal by putting the country first. The intricate constitutional arrangement of a new administration took place inside the honoured surroundings of Buckingham Palace. Rishi Sunak on his part while addressing the nation outside 10 Downing Street as part of a transfer of power that will see Kerry Starmer become the country's new Prime Minister, paid tribute to his rival who has taken his place in Downing Street, said he was a decent and public-spirited man. He has been my political opponent. Sir Keir Starmer will shortly become our Prime Minister. In this job, his successes will be all our successes, and I wish him and his family well. He later met with King Charles III and formally tendered his resignation as Prime Minister. And in a swift move to avoid a vacuum, Starmer equally visited King Charles III to pledge his allegiance and loyalty to monarchy. Keir Starmer, in his first speech at Downing Street, said his government will carry the responsibility of rebuilding the country. My government will serve you. Politics can be a force for good. We will show that. We've changed the Labour Party, returned it to service, and that is how we will govern. Country first, party second. K. Starmer will now become the third Prime Minister in two years. After a meeting at Birkingham Palace, the new Prime Minister appointed some members of his cabinet, with Rachel Reeves becoming the first UK female Chancellor, Yvette Cooper as Home Secretary and David Lamy as Foreign Secretary. Comforts, Fashion, NTA News. President Wola Tunubu has extended his warm congratulations to Sir Keir Starmer, leader of the Liberal Party on the victory of his party in the United Kingdom general elections. As a former leader of the opposition in Nigeria, President Tunubu especially noted the determination and courage the incoming Prime Minister of the United Kingdom demonstrated throughout his years in the opposition and as leader of the Liberal Party. The President stated that the party's ability to reform, mobilize and position itself for victory after 14 years, affirms the leadership qualities of Sir Starmer. In a statement by Ajuri Ingelale, special advisor to the president, media and publicity says, the president, Tinubu, also congratulates the citizens and government of the United Kingdom, describing the kingdom as an abiding model of democracy and Nigeria's long-standing partner, looking forward to deepening relations between Nigeria and the United Kingdom in mutual areas of interest and in strengthening democratic institutions as well as building a safer and more prosperous future for the people of both countries. And now joining me via Zoom is Mukhtar Imam, Professor of Political Science and International Relations at Al Muhiba Open University, Abuja. Professor, it's nice to have you join us on the news. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Now, right. Now let's get straight into the business of the day. How will you describe the 14 years rule of the Conservative Party in the UK? Well, um, first of all, um, a hearty congratulations to Kaistama 
the current Prime Minister um, of the United Kingdom. Um, of course, uh, extending that will be also a congratulations to the people of the UK. Um, this is a win, obviously, for democracy. Um, and so, therefore, I actually congratulate them. Uh, well, to your question, the 14-year rule of um, the Conservative Party in the United Kingdom um, has been, obviously, with um, mixed feelings. Um, every government that comes to reign has its uh, downsides and, of course, its pluses. Um, the Conservative Party did the most that it could. Um, it was um, a period of global recession, uh, which we have witnessed in the last um, two decades. And so, therefore, virtually um, all economies across the world have been suffering. This was a time in call where uh, we had uh, COVID, which was an uncharted territory. Um, and of, of course, um, no economy was spared from the wrath of COVID, and so on and so forth. Um, the global economic recession, like I talked about earlier, um, the war in Ukraine, um, the Brexit, um, and so on and so forth. So obviously, um, the last uh, decade or more has been a challenging time for not just the UK, but um, economies all around the world. Um, so on the economic front, of course, the United Kingdom within that space of time um, was driven into um, an, a recession, um, which obviously the gold sack man, a former employee, and the person of um, Sunak was able to drive the economy out of uh, in the first quarter of 2024. Uh, UK witnessed a, a slight, a modest, um, um, you know, rise in, um, in in its economy. There was a growth of about 0.6%. So you have to obviously look into all of these things and give a plus to the Conservative Party. It has done the most that it can. It's time for the opposition that has long awaited power and have it returned to power to also make its input as well. Right. Now, despite the Conservative Party's popularity, the Labour Party won and, of course, had a landslide victory. What will you say accounted for the switch? Well, the reality is um, nobody stays at the top forever, you know. Um, the, the last decade of um, uh, economic crisis, of recession, of um, the... Um, the strive that the United Kingdom has had to go through um, was basically instrumental to the win which Kaistema currently enjoys. Um, the reality is um, the, the people of the United Kingdom look, are looking for um, um, support in something else. And so obviously they would have to look to the opposition. Uh, over a decade has been given to the Conservative Party. Like I said, it has done the most that it can. It has reached its debt, so to speak. And so um, the people, obviously, who are the electorates, um, have made a decision. Um, and so a lot, the number of factors basically have contributed. Um, the crisis currently in, in Ukraine, which is basically becoming unpopular by the day, even amongst the people of the United Kingdom. Um, the, the October 7 um, crisis, uh, Spain and the occupation of the occupiers, Israel, um, basically also dealt a blow to Rishi Sunak. Sunak himself saw this coming. Um, he knew from opinion polls that uh, his party wasn't at its best. As a matter of fact, it was losing popularity amongst the people. Uh, why he called for this election, which I, in my view, is a snap election. Um, well, one wonders, but um, having said that, uh, a number of factors basically contributed, like I said, the economy, uh, global geopolitics right. and so on and so forth. Now, let's take a look at the margin, you know, the wide margin with the Labour Party winning 412 and the Conservative Party 120. If a party had the majority, you know, it doesn't need to rely on other parties to pass laws. Do you see this playing out and what effect will this have on the UK's democracy? Well, the reality is um, there's a majority right now um, in Parliament. Um, this landslide basically gives um, significant uh, power, significant um, lobby and bargain power to the Labour Party. Uh, there's no doubt about that. Uh, but if there's anything the UK Parliament is known for, it is um, its um, unpredictability. You know, regardless of um, what part. Party divide is currently holding sway to power today. 
uh, we could find, as we have seen in time past, that even within the political parties themselves, for example, the case of uh, Jeremy Corbyn and the current leader of the Labour Party, who is currently the Prime Minister, right. disagreements in the days of Brexit and the days after, you know, so yeah. there's a possibility we could see that play out as well. This is the beauty of democracy um, and the beauty of um, the democracy in the UK. You know, right. um, we've seen this um, views and counter views play themselves out in parliaments. Um, that is not to say that within the party, uh, this isn't a huge success or a huge plus for them okay. because it gives them um, so much bargaining power and they're going to bargain from a position of strength. Now, Professor Mukhtar Imam, thank you so much for coming on the news. Thank you for sharing your thoughts with us. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. Right. And still talking election, polls open in Tehran as voters start casting their ballots in the second round of Iran's presidential election. This follows the death of ultra-conservative President Ibrahim Raisi in a helicopter crash last month. Comfort Fashion has more details. The vote comes against the backdrop of heightened regional tensions over the war in Gaza, Iran's disputes with the West over its nuclear program, and popular discontents at the state of the country's sanctions hit economy. The Islamic Republic's Supreme Leader, Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, who has final say in all state matters, cast his ballot when the polls open at 8 a.m. local time. Kamane had earlier called for a higher turnout in the runoff, as only 40% of Iran's 61 million eligible voters cast their ballot in the first runoff election, the lowest turnout in any presidential election since the 1979 Islamic Revolution. In last week's first runoff, Pazashkian, who was the only reformist permitted to stand, won the largest number of ballots, around 42%, while the former nuclear negotiator, Jalili, came in second place with 39%, according to figures from Iran's election authority. The conservative parliament speaker, Mohammed Bagha Galibov, came in third place with 13.8% and cleric Mustafa Bu Muhammadi garnered less than 1%. Regardless of the results, Iran's next president will be in charge of applying state's policy outlined by the Supreme Leader who wields ultimate authority in the country. Comforts, Fashion, NT News. Mauritania's Constitutional Council has confirmed the re-election of President Mohamed Ul Sheikh El Gajwani in last weekend's election. The court validated Monday's first round results that put Gajwani in the lead with 56.12% of the vote. Once more, Comfort Fashion has details. Monday's first round results that put Gazwani in the lead with 56.12% of the vote, ahead of his opponent, Biram Da Abaid, and the Islamist candidate, Hamadi Old Sidi Al Mukhtar, was validated by the court. As no appeals were lodged with the court within the permitted time frame after the announcement of the results from Saturday's election, its Secretary General, Aminatu Mint Al Khalis, stated this at a ceremony in Rakshot. She added that given the results declared, Mohammed Oud Sheikh Al Ghazwani is elected president of the Republic of Mauritania and he will assume office on August 2nd, 2024. The 67 year old former army chief is widely credited with maintaining security in the West African state, which has largely withstood the tide of jihadism in the region and is set to become a grass producer. Since independence, Mauritania has faced a series of coups and authoritarian regimes, with the 2019 elections marking the first transition between two elected presidents. No major incidents were reported during the election, and three of Gazwani's six rivals have, however, called to congratulate him. But opposition candidate Biram Da Abaid continues to contest the results. Comforts, fashion, and tea news. We'll pause here, take a short break. We will bring you more reports right after. Welcome back. Now, Vice President Kashim Shetima says Nigeria's business environment has what it takes to return on investment and calls on existing investors to upscale while prospecting for new investments. 
This was at the inaugural meeting of existing foreign direct investors roundtable in Abuja. Benny Adams has the details. For every partnership, there are always issues that need resolving. And for the vice president, once there is a will, there is a way. In the event you are unable to get a pathway, you can approach me directly. I am here for you. And with no strings attached to because the interest of the nation supersedes whatever individual interest we might have. This close access also means that there is room for dissolution of all bottlenecks hindering the growth of businesses in the country as the vice president and his team commit to ensuring that issues impacting foreign direct investments are resolved for a collective economic growth. We understand that investment is not merely about financial returns but about building lasting legacies and making enduring contributions to society. Your investments have the power to uplift communities, create sustainable livelihoods, and drive inclusive growth. His Excellency President Bola, Ahmed Tinubu's aid for an agenda signals diverse opportunities, avenues for investment, from agriculture to renewable energy, through targeted incentives and public-private partnerships. We aim to unlock the full potential of these sectors catalyzing job creation and socio-economic empowerment across the nation. Chief Executives of the Nigerian Investment Promotion Commission, the Central Bank of Nigeria, and other regulators also commit to improving the ease of doing business environment. The oil sector, the oil and gas sector, has become more competitive. And as a result, the likes of Total Energies have come in, um, as well as other international firms have come in for investment and to also encourage you to scale up all the investments in nigeria the naira exchange rate has shown some recent improvement well there has been a period of heightened volatility around the end of may the volatility has reduced reflecting relative stability signifying a convergence of the rates Figures from the National Bureau of Statistics show that in the first quarter of 2024, foreign direct investments recorded $119.18 million, which is 3.53% of total capital importation in the period under review, which was $3.3 million. In Abuja, Benny Adams, NTA News. And experts from various sectors of societal life have implored Nigerians to be more patient with President Bola Tinubu's administration as the Renewed Hope Agenda is on course to make Nigeria greater. This was a key message at a public lecture that focused on the first year of the President in office. Ayodeji, Mike and Dave reports. So quickly. It was a gathering of experts from different fields of human endeavor to deliberate on the theme Nigeria yesterday, today and a prosperous future. The public lecture by Professor Emeka Umera in solidarity and honor of President Tinubu administration's activities and impacts focused on priority areas towards a greater Nigeria. Guest speaker, Senator Adams Oshomole, panelists and discussants highlighted inherent challenges in the country while proffering alternatives. There are a lot of things that have to be done all of this will require courage. The good news, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu has excessive dosage of courage. And I believe he will invest half of that and Nigeria will be on the march again. This president is making decisions as if he's not really interested in running for a second term in office. He's making decisions that may not be popular this time, but he knows that those decisions are what Nigeria needs especially given what he had inherited. We've done well, we've stumbled, but we, we, we can do better. And this is a moment for us to actually do better. Do better. If we take a preparation today, tackling security, what will be tomorrow? Tomorrow, Nigerians can be happy, going to be nice. The government is making effort. They call on Nigerians to renew their hope and patriotism as they postulate gradual but steady impacts of policies on the citizenry. This public policy advocacy and research think tank aims at also aiding policymakers in decision-making 
and impactful leadership in Abuja, Ayodeji, Makinde, NTA News. The Niger Civil Aviation Authority, NCAA, has suspended the permit of 10 private jets over failure to commence recertification process. The Director of Public Affairs and Consumer Protection of the agency, Michael Achimugu, in a statement says NCAA Regulations 2023 Part 18, Section 3, Subsection 4 forbids holders of permits for non-commercial flights PNCF from using their aircraft for carriage of passengers, cargo or mail and other commercial operations or charter services. President Bola Tinubu has directed continued discussions with fertilizer producers on the need to reduce prices of the farming input to enable farmers improve their yield. Minister of Agriculture and Security Abubakar Kiari said the recapitalization of the Bank of Agriculture is underway with a view to addressing financial challenges associated with farming. The minister was speaking as he hosted the Nigerian Society of Engineers in Abuja. Musa Baba Aliyu reports. Access to farming imputes, especially fertilizer, remains a major challenge for farmers this year. Minister of Agriculture and Food Security, Abubakar Kari, says government is aware of the challenge and efforts are underway to address it. The minister, while engaging with members of the Nigerian Society of Engineers, says heavy-duty equipment will be provided just as government is addressing financial constraints affecting smallholder farmers through the Bank of Agriculture. Bank of Agriculture and the Nigeria Agricultural Insurance Corporation under the directive of the National Council of Privatization is undergoing restructuring and recapitalization. So um, and very soon a new Bank of Agriculture will emerge. And that way you have the smallholder farmer have, an access, have access to capital and then de-risk it agriculture by the National Agricultural Insurance Corporation. The leadership of the Society of Engineers pledged to provide its expertise to assist the ministry in addressing food security challenges in the country. This will include mechanization, irrigation and other technical know-how. We plan to establish demonstration farms and engineering villages across the six geopolitical zones, enabling our engineers to apply their expertise in mechanized farming irrigation systems, and sustainable agricultural, agricultural practices. These hubs will not only centralize cutting-edge equipment for optimal resource use, but also serve as innovation incubators where new agricultural technologies can be developed and tested. The minister is therefore invited to be a guest speaker at the forthcoming annual meeting of the engineers. Musa Baba Aliyu, NTA News. Following the heavy downfall being experienced across the country, the federal government has listed 19 states, including the Federal Capital Territory, as areas prone to floods owing to continuous rainfall, which may also worsen the spread of cholera in the country. Usman Zubairu reports that the Ministry of Water Resources and Sanitation raised the concern while addressing a press conference in Abuja, where states and local government areas were taxed to step up efforts to avert imminent flood disasters. More than 10 states of the Federation and the FCT have experienced one degree of flooding or the other, with several casualties recorded, including displacement of people and loss of property. This situation has prompted the Ministry of Water Resources to call on state governments across the country to intensify preventive efforts against occurring flooding and also educate citizens to heed flood warnings from government agencies. The Ministry also urged people to abandon traditional beliefs hindering flood prevention and embark on the clearing of blockade drainage system and canals at all levels, as well as relocating of communities at the risks of flooding to safer locations. Both that the Federal Minister of Water Resources and Sanitation wishes to urge the states and the general public to take necessary measures to prevent ugly flooding maintenance of the past years. Although water has not been released from any dam within and outside the country, the ministry cautioned that the increase in the level of flooding across the country 
it wasn't the ravaging cholera outbreak. So we had a, an extensive deliberation. We look at all these issues and uh, we submitted our report uh, a couple of weeks ago. And that report, report went to I mean, National Economic Council and it was approved. And uh, now we are just preparing for the strategy of implementation. And I believe by next week, we will have that meeting and everybody will now go and identify the various roles, the stakeholders that will play in the implementation of that report. The 2024 annual flood outlook prediction released by the Nigerian Hydrological Services Agencies indicates that river flooding is expected in the beginning of this month and the state likely to be affected at Akwaibon, Anambra, Adama, Benue, Bayasa, Cross River, Delta, Edu and Jigawa. Odoza Kogi, Kebi, Kaduna, Niger, Nasarawa, Ondo, Ogun, Rivers, Taraba, and the FCT. Nabuja, Usmansberg, and T News. Now in line with the presidential mandate, the directive of the Federal Civil Service in realizing government's objectives, the Federal Ministry of Housing and Urban Development has signed a performance management system contract with top management of the ministry. Let's hear from Francis Udojo. We are signing this performance contract with a renewed sense of purpose and optimism, knowing that by working together, we can build a brighter future for Nigeria. The signing of this contract is focused on three key areas, mainly presidential, operational, and service-wise priorities. The permanent secretary of the ministry, Marcos Ogumbi, stressed that the initiative is about stimulating the creative and innovative actions of every officer to achieve organizational goals, especially in the infrastructural sector. We have a mandate. The mandate is to deliver affordable houses. So the, 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 the assignment is for all of us, people in-house, in people outside the house. But the PMS will bring out the best of the people in the house such that the objective of Mr. President the of the Mr. President is achieved. He added that the signing of the PMS contract is a firm commitment towards the realization of the renewed hope agenda of President Tinibu while urging the staff to key into efforts to ensure a better Nigeria. Francis Udojo, NT News. Let's check out the weather forecast. And that's the news. I am Frama Panyan. Hannah Olenka has been the sign language interpreter.